Good morning viewers at home. Um, today we are going to look at tricks to success in your practical biology. This um, paper is very important for students in all arms of senior secondary schools ranging from SS1, SS2 and SS3. It's also very important for SS3 students, they're about to write their senior secondary school examination, be it the WIAC, the NAPTEP, the NECO, or the GCE. Practical work is important in the study of biology. If a student sees the specimen he's studying in his natural environment, it is more likely that he will remember and understand it than if he only reads it in textbook. For success in your practical work, the crucial points you should remember are number one, writing materials. Your mind writing materials should include a sharp pencil, preferably HB pencil, a very good eraser to make your work very neat, a razor blade or a good sharpener, as a backup whenever your sharp pencil breaks. A well graded ruler, all these are what you actually need to come with you, to come with to the exam hall. The school or examination center in which you are gonna be sitting to write your exam is gonna provide you the following. The first one is a scalpel or a pen knife which is used for cutting the specimen. You can be asked to cut the specimen to any section. It can be either transverse or longitudinal. Then, white size. White size is provided in cases wherever there are questions like food tests. Now you have to mix reagents to prevent staining the specimen tables. That is when they usually ask for white size. Then petri dishes. Petri dishes are where specimens are actually placed on. A forcep. A forcep is used to pick the specimens. You use it to pick the specimen to avoid the effects of formaldehyde on your hand. When you pick the specimen, you can use the forcep to um, move the specimen to different directions based on what they ask of you. Because in some cases, they might ask you to draw the dosal view. They might ask for the ventral view. Some might even ask for the lateral view. Then beaker. Beaker is mainly used in cases whenever questions on diffusion in liquid substances. It is going to be asked. Now, before we proceed to number two, let's know what a specimen is. A specimen is part or whole of an organism used for scientific study or display. Now, number two, observation. Observe the specimen carefully. Avoid drawing exactly what you learned from textbook so that you won't end up producing different diagrams from the specimen. In other words, you are asked to draw according to instruction and according to what you see. The third trick, views or aspects of a specimen. In your practical work, you might be asked to draw a specific aspect of a specimen. This may be the dosal view, the ventral view, the um, lateral view or the side view, the anterior view, and the posterior view. Now let's go back to the first one, which is the dosal view. This dosal view is also known as the upper view. Paraventure, you are asked to draw the dosal view of a specimen. Just know that you are to draw whatever the specimen is from the top. It shows the whole up view of a specimen. The example I have below me is that of a cockroach. So that diagram shows the whole up view of a cockroach. So in case you are asked to draw cockroach, lizard, the dosal view of all those um, organisms, you draw it from this exact direction. Hope you are getting what I'm saying now. Ventral view. 
Ventral view is also known as lower view. The ventral view of a cockroach is what I have here below. Ventral view means lower, the under view. So that is why I said the forceps are very important in using to turn the specimen to different direction of instruction. So you can use the forceps to actually turn whatever specimen it is ventrally if peradventure you are asked to draw the ventral view of that specimen. So the ventral view shows the lower side of a specimen. This is another example I have here, the ventral view of a lizard. The next one is the lateral. Lateral means side view. Example is given below. The lateral or side view of a grasshopper. It means whatever you are asked to draw the lateral view of. This is where you should actually view it from. From the side. It can either be the left side or the right side. You view it laterally by the sides, exactly this direction. You draw fully and label. So what I have here is the lateral view of a grasshopper. Another example I have here is the diagram of lateral view of a rat. This is the lateral view of a rat. The anterior view. Anterior is also known as front view. You can also call it the approach view. This involves drawing the specimen from the front. I have here the front view of a cockroach. Although in rare cases, you, 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 you really see questions on anterior view. Because most, um, most um, practical questions, they like asking questions where you can get enough parts of that organism so that you can label enough enough. The last but not the least is the posterior view. Posterior view is also known as the back view. Example I have here is the picture showing the posterior view of the humerus, of the humeral bone. I have two bones here, sorry, two, um, a humerus bone, and I have the diagram of the front view and the back view. That's the anterior view and the um, posterior view of the humeral bone. You can pause enlarge and view it very well if you are interested in looking at this. In summary, these are the different kinds of views we have in our biological practical exam. These are the ones that the um, mainly ask question on. Although the side view is where we are looking at it from. Even if they didn't write it, this is the lateral view of this tilapia fish. Then the one above is the dosal view. The one at the front is the approach or the anterior view. The one at my left here is posterior. Then the one down is the ventral view. Oh, okay. The one down is the ventral view. Why from your eyes, how you are viewing it now? That direction is actually the lateral view. Section of a specimen. Sometimes you can be asked to draw the transverse or longitudinal section of a specimen. You are required to cut from the middle horizontally to get a transverse section. Look at this term. It's been cut from the middle horizontally. Hope you know your x axis. It's been cut from the x axis. That is the transverse view. When it's being cut from the y axis, the reverse is the case. You now have the longitudinal view. You are still going there. The second example of transverse section of an or is, is the one of an orange that I have here. Most of us peel orange transversely. When you want to sip it, we peel orange transversely. Then this is the diagram. Those that are interested in the diagram of an orange of the transverse view of an orange. This is the diagram. It's very important that at this stage, you should be able to know how to draw essential practical items or specimens. Even before going to the exam hall, it still help you, even if you are still asked to draw what you see. Longitudinal section of the specimen requires cutting the specimen into two equal halves from top to bottom. That is vertically. 
Example, the picture below represents longitudinal section of an orange. You see how it is. Just like how whenever most of us is peeling tangerine, you know we peel it horizontally. Sorry, we peel it vertically. That's what vertical section is. How to cut vertically? This picture here, I've explained everything about cutting vertically. Lines of a diagram. The diagram should be drawn with a sharp pointed pencil. This makes the diagram thin but clearly visible. Avoid woolly lines and make single lines. You see? Here's a student diagram of a fish, of a tilapia fish. The student tried in the sense that the line wasn't woolly. Then six point shading. Do not shade your diagram. These are the don'ts. Do not shade your diagrams. This should be left for fine arts students. The seventh one, labeling. Remember you are going to number nine. Labeling. Label fully. You don't know where your full mark might come from. This might fetch you more marks. Guidelines should be horizontal and parallel to the top edge of the paper. Never cut the lines across. The labels should be placed on either side of the drawing. The labels should be written in pencil. Do not put arrow at the end of the guideline because an arrow usually serves to show direction as in a chemical equation. Look at the chemical equation. The arrow is showing the direction, the reactant to products. It is used in chemical equation. You might cause confusion when labeling. By the time you put an um, arrow, it's as if you're writing a chemical equation. Or in some cases, you look as if no, you are drawing a food chain. As if you are drawing a food chain. Because lines can be used to indicate movement, as in food chain. Scale of your diagram. Work out the scales of magnification of your diagram by step one. Use a graded ruler to calculate the length of the diagram and the length of the specimen. Divide, that is a step two, divide the length of the diagram with the length of the specimen. For example, if the length of the diagram is 14 cm and the length of the specimen is 7 cm, your magnification therefore is 14 cm divided by 7 cm, which equals 2 cm. So your magnification is times 2. Attach the magnification to the diagram head. The last but not the least, heading for all your diagrams. Any diagram you make must bear a heading stating what the diagram is and its scale. Example, the diagram to show the external features of a tilapia fish. You write the magnification beside it, like you can see, times two. This is an example. Diagram of a femur times half. And what you should also know is that if any magnification is less than one, don't identify it with decimals. Let it remain in fraction. I believe with this tip, you've known almost everything you need to know consigning biological practical for external exam. I wish you more A's in all your endeavors and during your examination. Thank you for listening.